This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mankin Eating Barbecue Company. Mankin Eating Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they will take your seasoning from good to great. Mankin Canadian Food Truck will be in Cary this Wednesday and Thursday uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. On Wednesday, they'll be at the North in Patterson. And then this Thursday, they will be at the Shrine Cafeteria. Again, this Wednesday and Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. You got nothing to make or not sure what to do for dinner that Wednesday and Thursday? Be sure to hit up the Mad Canadian and tell them the Sloopcast crew sent you. Mad, Ca- Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Ohio-based but world-class Hand roasted, roast to order, micro batch coffee company. All of their beans are fair trade certified. All of their beans are USDA organic. Integrity is at the core of what they do. Integrity means doing everything the right way, even when no one's watching, even when no one's forcing you to do it. You can save money with a subscribe and save service. Uh, they have gift cards available. I, we're s- just at the start of like maybe some people are starting to do some Christmas stuff now, like just at the start of it. Get them an Iron Bean Coffee Company card if you uh, if that if that's if you like a thing they might want. Uh, free shipping over fifty dollars. Uh, so you can find a bunch of great coffees. I'll talk about some of the individual coffees in the next ad read. But you can find all of those great coffees for yourself over at IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. YouTube and Discord and Discord and YouTube. If you don't know, if you're maybe new to the show, this is where our intro music plays for our audio only listeners. Um, but uh, you, YouTube's jerks about that. So what, what you going to do? This is just where we have a little conversation with you guys instead. I hope, hope everyone's had a good weekend here. Hopefully things kind of calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Just depends. Just depends. All right. You know what? You know what? And all those things that depends on Kyle are things we're going to talk about in the show. So let's just get at it. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Um, I'm okay over here, Jared, to be honest. How are you? I, I'm not going to complain. I'm really not going to complain. Um, so one of the things Tom and I talk about before we start a, a post game show, especially is like, what's what's the tone here? What's what's the tone of the show going to be? Because we've come out and we've done fire and brimstone before and we've come out and we've done the guys, you're overreacting and you're spoiled and everything's fine. And we've done shows where we've celebrated and been like what a great game i don't know kyle what, how, how do you feel what, what's our tone going to be this episode uh for me honestly i think it's a little bit of two things one i think patience is yeah. starting to wear thin i think both <laughs> okay. for buckeye okay. buckeye fans and coaches, certain coaches. And two, after what I've seen after the game, just a bunch of just a bunch of spoiled Buckeye fans. A bunch of spoiled Buckeye fans. That uh is for sure, sure. But again, I don't wanna I don't wanna like gaslight people. The defense is 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 bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not I'm not gonna take away anything that the defense I I can see improvement, still not to the degree of what we were hoping to see, especially against Tulsa. Yeah, uh, I did like what I started to see. Hopefully, that's um, um, stepping stones to seeing an improved defense in the coming weeks. But the offense was a big surprise to seeing how they struggled early on, and especially in the air. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. Yeah, um, when it comes to the defense. I said on the Thursday episode, which is our Know Your Enemy episode, that if Tulsa, I predicted Tulsa would score 21 points. And I said, if that happens, and if my prediction was correct, 
that that would be a failure on the part of the Ohio State defense. To allow Tulsa to score 21 points would be a failure on the part of the Ohio State defense. The Ohio State defense lets up 20 points. So one away, and we're, we're not going to... I'm not going to be like, well, they didn't get 21, you guys. Like, it's just as much a failure. It's just as much a failure. Um, the, the defense... The, so I, what if I'm going to ask myself the question, like, what's the tone, right? What's the tone? The tone is one still of disappointment. And, and I don't, I, I don't want to, I don't want to belittle that. I don't want to spend a lot of time. Like everyone's going to tell you why they're disappointed and how and everything else. And, and like, it's not like we're not going to, but me just maybe trying to put some positive spin on things. It's disappointment. It's absolute disappointment. I'm not going to defend the defense and tell you that it's good. Actually, not, not, not going to do that. But I'm saying, but what I do want to say is that I'm seeing sparks of hope. I'm seeing sparks of hope and, and we will, that's the thing I'm going to revisit. I think during, so it's bad right now, just, just to be clear, it's bad right now, but I am seeing sparks. I, I am seeing positive sparks. And it's not consistent enough and it's not good enough. And yes, those positive sparks came against a terrible Tulsa team. Don't think for one moment that I forgot or am forgetting who those positive sparks came from. You know what this game really reminded me of, Jared? Big 10 championship game of, against Northwestern. Could not throw the ball, couldn't get anything going. And you know who bailed us out? A running back. Yeah, except that Running was Northwestern. Failed, failed at that. Yeah. Did I say Northwestern? No, no, no. I'm saying, but that was against Northwestern. Yes. Did not Tulsa. It, it reminded me a lot of it. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. Like, yeah, Northwestern more respectable. Yes, I understand, but the feel of it. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that this should diminish of uh, how bad how bad overall the um, the team played, but that's just how the how the game felt. Couldn't throw the ball. Quarterback struggled, and the running back took over took over the game there. I mean, hats off to to Henderson there. New freshman record there over almost 300 yards, 278 yards. I think was the official number. Man, just we we knew he was going to be great. And I didn't expect him to have this kind of game, this kind of game this early on. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, I mean, the, the hype around him has been enormous and never doubted for a moment that it was, but yeah, it's, it's still nice to see because we've had some hype around some other guys who haven't really panned out. So it is nice to see the hype to pan out so far, pan out so far, but it's, it's nice to see the hype being absolutely real around him. Um, so Kyle, we're, this is, this is our standard and grade episode, um, standard and grade. So we've already, we've already touched on it. Running back. How are we going to, how are we going to grade the running back position for this game? How could you give him anything less than an A? How dare you even suggest Uh, he doesn't get the plus. How dare you even suggest that that's not an A plus? A plus. Team rushed for team rushed for almost eight yards per carry. There rushing a uh, team total for three hundred twenty three yards on the ground. Yeah. Okay. A plus. A plus there. Okay. Um, a and a smiley in a smiley face sticker. Yeah. I uh, see. I'm I'm good with an A and a smiley face. All right, quarterback. Um, th- this will probably want to be the one of the more divisive topics. Um, the thing happened that I asked everyone really nicely. <laughs> Already seeing the grades come into the chat. Um, I asked everyone very, very nicely during the offseason to please don't pick a side for the quarterbacks who you've not ever seen play a football game. And there are people who wanted Stroud benched by the first quarter of the first game. So 
th- those people had made up their mind and have an agenda and wanted a certain quarterback for maybe certain reasons to be starting uh, a game and that they didn't want it to be CJ Stroud. They really, really wanted it to be one of the other three guys. If you catch my, if you catch my drift. Um, but CJ Stroud's the guy. CJ Stroud's the guy. And again, there are people who are just turning on him immediately. Now, that is not to say he had a good game against Tulsa because he did not. He had a bad game against Tulsa. He had under 200 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception, and just just did not seem like he was comfortable in the pocket there. When he got outside of the pocket, he seemed better. He actually seemed better when he was on the move, throwing it on the run. I thought he did, he did a lot better there which, outside of the pocket. Which to me which to me is evidence that he is he's struggling mentally right now. And when I say mentally, I'm talking emotionally. I'm not talking like schematically. I'm not talking about playbook. I'm not talking about reading defenses. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking like emotionally because when you watch the passes he's missing are when the guys are open and he has a moment to think about it. The passes he's drilling on the money like the high four star quarterback that he is. Is either when the wide receivers covered and he has to just let it rip or when he, as Kyle said, he's out on a roll, he's rolling out and he's just, he can't think he just has to twist his body, toss the ball and go. So to me, that's further proof that what he's struggling with right now is, is mentally. and. Mm-hmm. The Ohio State players have been getting a ton of crap from fans on social media. And if you're if you're adding players on social media. Go fuck yourself. I'll, I'll say it like their their kids. Leave them alone. Like, oh, they can't handle some criticism. OK, everyone. Criticism. Being an asshole. Telling someone they suck is not criticism. That's being an asshole. So I just I just want to state that for the record. The only criticism is constructive. It is constructive criticism. And that's what the coaches are paid for. Now, I'm not saying you have to like CJ Stroud again. He's looked not great. He didn't look great this game. He looked a lot better in the Oregon game than people give him credit for. I just want to state that. He's inconsistent right now. Hey, he's a he's he's playing his third ever game. Shock. He's inconsistent. That being said, all of that being said, um, this was not a good game in particular. Kyle's already written C minus in that into the show notes, and I'm going to go with it as well. But I'm not yeah, giving up on C- CJ Stroud is really what I'm what all that long windedness was about was he had a bad game, but I, I don't think that's grounds or evidence that he should be benched. Yeah, no, absolutely. I thought, I thought he had a, uh, gangland says average performance. I think, I think below average. Um, but yeah, it's from what we saw in the first two games, we know, we know what he, he can do when he's, when he has his mind in the right place. Cause I, I, I agree with Jared. I think that there's just something, Maybe he's just overthinking things instead of just reacting and just doing it there. So I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Having this next game against Akron could be a good uh, confidence boost. You get you get a little bit easier um, defense to go against here. So we'll we'll, we'll see in this next next game here. Um, wide receivers here. Wide receivers here. I I. Th- so the part couple of things when I when I'm thinking of the wide receivers, like one, we saw a ton, ton of slipping on that field there. Now there's a lot of criticism of, along with the field and the condition of hey, this this field needs to be replaced. It looks like crap. It should never look this way at Ohio Stadium. I agree, but Oregon played on that same field and Tulsa played on that same field and 
they weren't slipping. Agreed. So that, that, that's that's not an excuse to me. If only your players are slipping on the field, it can't be just the field. That's um, that's the issue. So a lot, lot of drops, especially from uh, really unusual from um, from our wide receiver group here. So I'd I probably give him this. I probably give him a C at um, for for this wide receiver group. Just a ton of broken passes, ton of slipping there, or ton of missed catches, um, ton of slipping there. Just un- unusual for this wide receiver group. Yeah, Olave, Olave caught the ball straight. Just one of one of maybe Stroud's best passes of the entire game. It's is that a because you had a tight end drop like his best game, his best best ball. Um, was it? I think that one was against Minnesota. One of his best balls of the entire day to Chris Olave, and Olave straight dropped it. Um, and again, we grade based off of expectation. We grade based off of expectation. So the wide receivers who are supposed to be the best core in the entire country, they underperformed C. And I, quite frankly, I think that's generous, but we'll go with a C for now. Yep, I agree. Tight ends. Um, I'll give tight ends a B. I thought, I thought tight ends overall did pretty well. Um, made some made some good catches. Um, gave a little bit more confidence to to Stroud and in, in certain parts of the game there. So I I give him the B in this game. Agreed. That's fine. Um, also, they played a part in the run blocking as well. That that needs to be stated. The running back runs. You know, you have a running back run for 277 yards. The tight end played a role in that. Mm-hmm. Offensive lineman here, Jared. I. I'd probably give offensive linemen like a. I'd probably give them like a. I'm on the edge of B plus to A minus there somewhere, just because they're the ones that's helping to block on the yeah. run. And your team runs for over 300 yards. And what was it? I think they let up one, maybe it's two sacks. I think it was one sack was that they two. let well, up. I know, I know CJ, I think it was, I think it was two. I know CJ Stroud had two quote unquote carries on the day. And I don't think either of them were for positive yards. Okay. So, all right. So I'll give them, I'll give the offensive lineman a B plus then. It really hurt that um, Munford went down. Yeah. But but it it, honestly, I didn't think that it was that, that severe that he was missed because I thought that um, the next man up just came in. And took care of business there. Ohio, Ohio State has has depth on the offensive line right now. So, like all all due respect and tons of respect to Thayer Munford, they have guys. Um, they, yeah. they do have guys um, who can step was, in. Um, yes. Um, thankfully, it doesn't look like it's that that big of an issue. I mean, we'll see how long he's out though. But uh, coaches don't believe he he'll be out for that long period of time. Well. And this is, you know, we have a lot of frustration with the coaching right now. One of my frustrations with the coaching right now is the insane amount of secrecy that's taking place. We had seven banks mysteriously return this week in the in the second half. We had uh, we had Chop Williams just disappear from the game. Don't know why. Um, We still don't know what the heck's going on with Harry Miller. it's yeah, it's just I don't know the the the, vent, the coaching staff is being insanely secretive this year, and and mm-hmm. maybe for good reason. Acknowledged, acknowledged, acknowledged. Maybe for good reason, but still. Yep. All right. Before we get to the defense here, because I seem to jump ahead here, let's go ahead and hear from our sponsors. Absolutely. All right. So, Mad Kitty Barbecue Company. Uh. If you haven't heard at the top of the show, I'll say it again here. The Mad Canadian His Food Truck will be in Cary this Wednesday and Thursday uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. So if you're in the Cary Finley area, go hit up the Mad Canadian Food Truck on Wednesday at the corner of North and Patterson and on Thursday at the Shrine Cafeteria. It's just some great, great uh, food that the Mad Canadian has to serve there. Uh, you're not looking wanting to make dinner or you don't have any dinner plans 
hit up the Mad Canadian and tell him the Swipcast crew sent you. Uh, be sure to follow his social medias to find out more information about his food truck and where he will be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company. I already did all. I did all that in the first ad read. We don't got to do that. Um, let, let's talk about. I think we talked about the medium roast last time. Uh, I think we can talk about some of the flavored coffees. Uh, there's the mom's carrot cake. Uh, you can probably take a wild guess what that one's flavored like. Uh, the intense blueberry and the mint chocolate chip uh, are also pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's the Dylan's grog. Uh, the grog is one of the most. I would say one of the more common uh, flavors, but there's nothing. There's nothing common about Dylan's grog. That is the Irish grog is again, I feel like it's the IPA of 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 gourmet coffee. Everyone seems to have a grog. This one's Dylan's and it's it's fantastic. Of course it is. Uh, there's the entire back room, the entire uh, murder line of coffees. You get coffees there. They're like blueberry crumbles and red velvet cakes and a lot of great, uh, more unique, more uniquely flavored coffees over in that back room. Um, and then, of course, there's the unicorn and the unicorn is it's a it's a magical coffee. It's a, that's what it is, because you just never know what you're going to get in the bag. I got it once and I'm pretty sure it ended up being that blueberry crumble that's now available in the murder room or the back room murder coffee murder, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, so I ended up getting like this awesome preview of a coffee that wasn't quite out yet. And that's what you get with the unicorn is like a, it's a mystery R&D bag. It's typically not always, but typically a flavored coffee. So uh, you can find all of those amazing flavored coffees and a bunch of standard not flavored coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, time to move on to the defense. Um, oh, boy. You want to start with the defensive line? Let's start with the defensive line. Zach Harrison out with an apparent back injury. Um, I, I once again felt like the defensive line was largely a disappointment, um, especially from the starting crew. But I, I think I would be not doing justice if I didn't talk about the fact that, again, if we're starting to talk about sparks we're starting to see, especially on the you know, we talked about the spark we saw on the offensive side of the ball from from Henderson. Now talk about some of the sparks we're starting to see from the defensive side of the ball. And of course, it's all coming from this amazing 2021 freshman class. And like, I know you're expecting me to say JT Tui Molau. OK, and, and like he did, he had he had moments of of absolute flash. He, he had some of the few disruptive plays I saw all day from Ohio State's defense was from JT Tui Molau. Mm -hmm. That being said, I, I think we'd also be remiss if we didn't talk about, uh, again, some of the only disruptive defensive plays I saw from the defensive line all day would be Tyleek Williams, another true freshman. We saw Jack Sawyer draw another holding call, which was huge. Um, that That appears to unfortunately be like, his calling card, at least as a true freshman through three games, is drawing holding calls. But I'll be damned if uh, that's not a hell of a play regardless. Exactly, Buckeye yeah. Zach, if it works. So I I, I think when, when, when it comes to the defensive line, I thought the interior of the defensive line played really well. I mean, you what was the, what were the final uh, numbers here? You You only led up. Uh, 73 rushing yards on 28 carries. So you ha held them to two and a half yards to carry. Solid. That, that's and good. by the way, those, I just want, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I just want to say that number is even inflated because Tulsa got a decent number of those yards in the fourth quarter when Ohio State was in straight up prevent mode and they ran a couple draw plays. So even that, I want to say that number is probably inflated by 20 or more yards. Yeah. Uh, but the defensive ends, we talked about how great Ohio State had in these defensive ends this year. We thought that, oh, they're just like with all the talent that they have, they brought in for this year. Plus, who's returning here? This was just going to be such a 
great defensive line and that the quarterbacks are going to be, or just going to have just be running with their heads cut off is what we thought at the beginning of the year. And at the complete opposite from what we've seen through here, we are through three, three games here. And we're not really seeing the kind of quarterback pressure that we're hoping to see from this, um, from this, these defensive ends here. So it's, it's, it's really frustrating for me as a fan to, to see Ohio State's defensive line not get great pressure because in this in this game here, I'm not going to, yes, Ohio State led up over 400 passing yards, but a lot of that's because the quarterback had all day to throw, all day. Yeah. And you can't expect the defensive backs and the safeties and the linebackers to cover their their spot or their man if they're playing man-to-man for five seconds, seven seconds, whatever the case may be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what gangland great coverage but if you can't get to the quarterback make them uncomfortable well, it gives them more time to view the view the field and to make a, a better pass there it, it all starts from the defensive line if you're not getting any pressure from the defensive line it doesn't matter how good of a secondary or linebackers you have receivers are going to get open you got you gotta gotta get pressure on that defensive line and if you're so not getting me, and if me, you're not getting here i i I'd give, I'd give the defensive line a D minus. I'd give him a D minus in this game. I kind of want to bump that up to maybe a D plus. M- noting that that plus is coming for or because of. To him, allow Sawyer, Tyleek Williams. It's not it's not for the starters. It's for the young guys who showed up and flashed. What was it that you said, Jared, in a. Uh, during during our our watching um our social you're talking screen. about yes. oh it, i would it, be perfectly i know what you're talking about i said this i said this in our discord i also i think said it on twitter at some point i'd be perfectly happy if the ohio state starting line the starting defensive line was huskel was ha- huskel haskell garrett mm-hmm. and three freshmen mm-hmm. i would be perfectly happy if it yeah. was Sawyer, JTT, Tyleek Williams, and Haskell Garrett as the starting defensive line. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, Got to move on here. Linebackers. Linebackers, I thought was okay. Yeah. I think they, I don't think it was anything special. I thought they did their job, um, plugged in the holes when they needed to on the, on run stops. Okay. In coverage. So, okay. Gives me like a, I don't know, C plus. Yeah, maybe C plus, maybe a B B minus. Um, I I will just note that one of the reasons why Ohio State's defense looks so much better is because Cody Simon was out there a lot. And I'm Cody not Simon. I will continue yeah, to Cody Simon, Cody Simon made his first career start in replace of uh, of Mitchell there. So yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh defensive backs. So let's start with the and corners. Also, I'm just not, once again need to acknowledge that it's Tulsa. Yes. Defensive backs. So with the corners, I thought I thought they did OK. There were some breakdowns and just mentioned that about two minutes ago here. So I'd probably give the defensive backs a C in this one. Why, why are we grouping together the defensive backs? Because I thought the safeties played yeah. meh at best, but the I thought corner- the corners played great. I thought the corners played great. When most of the passes that were be, that were being given up were being given up in the middle of the field, again you have to acknowledge that there was no pass rush. I, I don't I don't think the the passes were getting completed against the corners nearly as much. We saw Burke make some amazing plays. We saw Cam Brown blanket his guy. Martinez gets a pick six, takes it into the end zone. I thought the corners played great. I think the reason why you see 400 passing yards given up was mostly due to the middle of the field, not the corner's fault, the middle of the field being open, which is part the linebacker's fault, but also part the defensive line's fault because Ohio State had to blitz their linebackers so much to make up for the fact that the defensive line wasn't getting any pressure. I think, I I don't think it's the corner's faults. I thought, I think the corners are playing really well. The middle of the field, the linebackers and the safeties, I think, is and the, the fact that the quarterback is clean the entire game is where the passing defense is falling apart. 
So what, what grade would you give him? A B then? The corners? Specifically the corners? Mm-hmm. I yes. gave him an A. I thought they played incredibly well. Hmm. Okay. I, the safety, I, I thought safety, the, cor- the no. safeties not so much. All right. With the safeties, what would you grade the safeties in, in, the, in this game here? Um, a... Uh, not great. I don't know. What, what do you got? What, what, are the, what does the chat say? Is it a... Is it a I see I'm having they didn't play a good game, but at the same time, I didn't expect them to have the good game. So if we're grading based off of expectation, it's probably a C, um, maybe a C minus. Again, with Proctor being out, my expectations were pretty low. So, like I said, if we're grading based off of expectation, it's a C. Um, but they probably pay, played worse than that, if I'm being honest. All right. All right. I can I can go with the C. I can go with the C. All right, uh, special teams. I thought they were fine. No issues. Give them, uh, they they made every field goal. And what, they punted once, I think it was? I think they only punted once. Um, Is that true? I'm just looking. No, no, three times. They punted three times. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, Mur- Murko, I thought, was fine there. The return was fine. Yeah, I'd, I'd give them, I'd give them a like an A minus for special teams. No, no, no real issues for them. I like the kickoff returns this game. I State got to return some kickoffs, and I, I thought they they looked good in the process. Yeah, yeah. averaged averaged about twenty one yards um, per return. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no right. complaints and, on and special now, teams. And now, and now coaching, Jared. Coaching. This one's complicated. Um, you know, during the Thursday episode, I, I talked about like. I can draw two separate narratives for you. One is like the coaching staff is completely worried about the coaching staff and not about Tulsa and that they're not very well prepared for Tulsa specifically. And I think that's what we saw. I think you saw a lot of Ohio State trying to work out their own issues as opposed to beating Tulsa, which I think is why they were trying to maybe fit a bit of a square peg into a round hole with the offense in the first half. Um, I think maybe that's a little bit why they were not necessarily playing to Tulsa's strengths on defense, but instead just trying to like build, build a a new defensive scheme, which is why you, you saw them play some of the defensive schemes. They were, I think they were playing against Tulsa, even if it didn't necessarily match up. Um, Matt Barnes was calling the plays for this game and not Kerry Combs. And I felt like that was better. This isn't going to be fixed overnight. I, I, Again, we're talking about sparks of hope for the future. Not that this game was good. I'm not need to say that as many times as I need to say it. I'm not saying this game was good, but I am saying I saw sparks that give me hope for the future that they're going to figure this out. And I think the play calling switch to Matt Barnes was a good choice. The defense looked to be more multiple this game. It looked to be less stale in the play calling. I think that was a great maneuver. But I just I don't know what else they can do. I know there's a lot of people out there like fire carry. Who who do you replace him with? No one who's worth a damn and wants a job doesn't currently have a job right now. And like guys like Mark Pantone or uh, uh, D'Antonio are, are pipe dreams. It's not happening. Bud Foster pipe dream, not happening. It's, it's not happening guys. It's not happening. So it's not to say they can't necessarily still pull in someone as an analyst. I think that would still be good. Um, but switching Matt Barnes to play calling and putting Kerry Combs up in the booth, I think might be as good as we're going to get until January, as far as any of that goes. And it's so, never going to be a great defense this year. It's never going to be a great defense. Um, would, but, you, so would you give them a, a C then? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
It's 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 like like I mentioned before. It's we can see the we can see what they're trying to do, and I I like what they're trying to do. It's just going to take some time though. But <laughs> but yeah, that that's a good point. At least at least the offense doesn't look as bad as as um, some other offenses that are that are highly ranked as well. If it makes you feel any better, everybody, I don't think anyone's any good right now. That may, if that makes anyone feel better, there's not an impervious team out there right now. All right, Jared, let's, let's get into some ask Sloopcast questions here. Uh, Woody five, six, one in our discord asks us who the hell is this new defensive consultant analyst? And why should I sleep better at night because of him? There is none. Um, you should sleep better because you don't have any control over what it is. A bunch of 19 year olds do on a football field. Don't don't lose any sleep over it, guys. Be a fan and love it. But the defense is never going to be capital G great this year. You're we're, we're, we're shooting for serviceable and setting up for next year as far as the defense goes. Uh, that's not to say. I think the offense, I think they could get the offense good enough, elite enough still to still make Ohio State a solid playoff contending team who could win a playoff game. But they would just they just need to score because the defense is never going to be great this year. Yeah. Randy asks the biggest positive surprise and negative surprise from from this weekend's game. I, I mean, I think we talked. I, I think we covered most of that. Again, seeing sparks from Tyleek Williams and JTT. And of course, you know, not that we're necessarily surprised by Henderson. That's that's what we wanted out of him. And um, and then I would also say the continued maturation of Burke and Martinez at corner. Uh, we actually saw seven banks on the field. So that was also a nice surprise. Um it's the, weird the, to me, negative. Kyle, that all of us. So and then on the negative side, just the continued struggle of the defensive line, especially from a pass, yep. pass rush perspective. Well, Kyle, just... how on did anyone did anybody in the entire country predict that Ohio State's best defensive group this year would be the corners and their worst defensive group would be their defensive ends? Nope. Nope. All right. Um, moving on here. If Burke had it controlled. And come away, come away with that overturned interception with the ball, and instead strip the ball, instead of rolling down the field, would the play still have been called a Tulsa catch? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think so. No, but that might just come across as sour grapes. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I just, yeah, I just don't understand how they could have ruled that a catch I, it still boggles my mind you know what the problem is you know what the honest to god problem is you know in a court of law you can't show stuff in slow motion because when you slow show sl show stuff in slow motion it fools our stupid lizard brains into interpreting intent when there is no intent because because we're seeing it our stupid lizard brains are seeing it happen slowly we assume that the perpetrator in place is, is doing it intentionally because, of course, it's happening slowly. He has a chance to stop. Point is, is that I'm starting to wonder if we should ban. If we should ban slow motion. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Go, go watch the instant replay, but watch it in real time because you wa watch that in real time and tell me for one second that wasn't Burke's ball. All right, uh, Buckeye Zach asked, the defense seemed to have figured it all out for Tulsa, but the offense downgraded quite a bit. Could you say that this could be due to Oregon wear and tear, that the focus has predominantly defense for the past week, or that the players and coaches have no sense of urgency or care? Well, I, um, not Coach, Day, Coach, Day did come out and, Coach Day did come out and say that that was his focus this last week, was on the defense. Yeah. So... Maybe, maybe a little bit on the offense, why the offense didn't look all that good to at the start of the game. But, but man, the, I don't know if people really realize, but this was the most points Ohio State scored in the first half all year. Yeah, 
Um, it's I, there. There's a lot of turmoil taking place at the Woody Hayes right now, and they they're going to have to work through it. Yep. Uh, Kabuto asks Jack Sawyer. Believe me, it's not due to a lack of care on anyone's pl- on an, in anyone's position. Absolutely not that. Jack Sawyer. Jack Sawyer's low key had a strong game, in my opinion, forcing holding calls instead of sacks. Should he and JT Tuimao start a defensive end going forward? I uh, I mean I don't I don't know I don't know if, yes I think so I don't think it'll happen but just because they don't necessarily start doesn't mean they can't get heavier rotation. Yes. Yep. All right. And the last question here: Illinois Buckeye two hundred two in our Discord. Are we concerned yet that T Tons offense versus Buckeyes defense? Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not right now just because T-Town's offense, away. it's all, it's all running right now. Well, that's, that's they just have a, they, 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 they're able to run the ball and they still can't figure out their passing yet. So I'm, I'm not worried yet. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's two months away. I'm going to say no, because it's two months away. All right. There's another question here, but, but we're way over in time here. I really would like to answer this question and, Duncan asked a couple of questions or things that he noticed at the game that he was at, mainly or mainly around um, attendance at Ohio Stadium. Yeah, not not that good. Yeah. Ohio Stadium was at just under seventy five percent, so just under three quarters full. Which I never thought I would see the day that Ohio Stadium would have had less than eighty thousand in in those seats there. And I was completely shocked to see that. Yeah, we've had better spring games. Yeah, I, I mean, all right, that's it. That, all right, that's it, Jared. Let's, um, that's all the questions we have, and um, want to thank everyone for listening in, and be sure to check out Tuesday's episode where we will talk about the national uh, review and our thoughts about some of those um, big games and chaos, and what could have been a very chaotic weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, make sure to visit the uh, just to find all of our different stuff. Um, and Kyle, do you have anything for Kyle's corner? Crew gets a point, a big point on the road there against um, the presumably the best, uh, well, has the best record in MLS right now, uh, New England. So they get a point on the road there. It's, it's a step in the right Step in the right direction, just like Ohio State's defense. There you go. Sparks, right? Sparks. All right. Uh, what's what'd you say? A new hope. There you go. A new hope. Where's Brawls? Um, <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So, like I said, visit all of our uh, Sloopcast stuff. Do all of that. And tonight's ending music will be... Uh, Snarls. Uh, they have a new album coming out. It'll be out in November. You can pre-order it now. Uh, you can listen to the song Fixed Gear right now. With, and not, not only right now because it's available on their Bandcamp page, which I will link to in the show notes, but also if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can actually just listen to it right now just by doing nothing because I'm about to play it for you. Funny how that works. If you're on YouTube, just there'll be a link down there to the to the song and you can click on that and you guys can listen to it that way so with all that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is snarls <laughs>